broadcasting tonight, of course, at TammyPepperman.org on No Borders Radio, at No Borders Radio also in the UK. And uh, we're thankful for these venues. If you would like to donate, please donate to our web hosting service as we are listener and reader supported, as always. And, of course, Tamworth Web Hosting has donated their time and energy and, of course, space to not only keep us on the air, but also to keep us on the web. And we're absolutely thankful for these things. Oh, okay. So, this week has been quite the week. I'm just going to... um, Get right into it. We've got uh, so many things. Of course, everything going on in Palestine, Gaza, Israel. And these are, of course, corporations located in the District of Columbia. These are traded entities, human beings, are maintained as stock in the greatest show on earth, the United States of America style or chain of events, meaning it's only congressional actions. It is also known as the Lord God, the other father, its children, known as Satan, Barabbas, the murderer, the one that you continuously patronize and call your father whilst leaving each other on that proverbial cross. Jesus, in Greek and Latin, simply means your earth. Psychology has taught you to view yourself from the inside. And you call this me. That creation is in three variants. It is the id, it is the ego, it is the superego, and it is not the me that, of course, Jesus referred to in the texts. The me that Jesus referred to in the texts is the one that you see with your eyes not the one that is formed in the mind as a concept through various actions of psychological warfare imposed upon you the human being man is a legal creation woman is a legal creation gender stemming from the word genus or other species. The eight stages of genocide, the eight stages of genocide are all dependent on these titles that you take up. Taking up a title or giving a title is otherwise known as casting lots. by which you are crucified. Casting lots within envy, of course, is always detrimental to your earth. And absolutely, absolutely without a doubt, beneficial to Polycrates, the action of controlling and possessing many shortened to politics or the practice of law. 
The etymology on law, of course, means to lay down, stemming from the word lagu. Literally means to lay down. The opposition to laying down, of course, is to be resurrect or able to stand again. The resurrection does not imply it anywhere, anywhere, that this is a reincarnation. Resurrection means to stand again. And this is written in Matthew 18. The Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. Now Jesus speaks in metaphor throughout the text, of course, time and time and time again. When the attorneys attempted to call him Jesus Davidson, he argued this. It says, how can I be the son of David and the son of God at the same time? How can I call David my Lord when David is not my Lord? And of course, these very priests, scribes, and Pharisee have been perverting his word forever within the action of politics. How does this happen? As our children, our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters, our family of the human race are slaughtered day after day by congressional action and peace, meaning pact, stemming from the word pax, P-A-X. How can this happen for so very long? How can this be tolerated for any length of time? Of course, everybody's been made victim of fourth generation warfare, psychological warfare, low intensity conflict, lawfare. And this is not only perpetrated by the mainstream media. This is not only perpetrated by the corporate interests. This is not only perpetrated by those that cash in. This starts at home. If you allow yourself to separate yourself from everyone else, you are in a secular society. You are adhering to social engineering. human behavior modification. You are allowing this to fester and grow larger than life. I often wonder what would have happened during the time of Lincoln, during the time of Taft, Garfield, and the others who were credit reporters for Donna Bradstreet. I often wonder what would have happened had humanity realized what was going on when the corporations got life over that of a human being, being called a person in the 14th Amendment. I often wonder why nobody realized that the Expatriation Act was three days before the 14th Amendment was signed into play by the credit reporter for Donna Bradstreet, Attorney-in-Chief, also known as Abraham Lincoln. I often wonder many things.
I want to know why this is still continuing to this day. How the mind could be so malleable and tolerant. And we know many things. There's drugs in the water, there's drugs in the food, there's metabolism issues related to eating the food that's offered through the FDA food pyramid, otherwise known as a feed bag. Alcohol consumption and the implication of soma theory and mass. I urge everybody to study Edward Bernays, Edward Louis Bernays was an Austrian-American pioneer in the field of public relations and propaganda. Most people only know about Joseph Goebbels and Hitler's propaganda minister. Hitler didn't join the Confederacy fully until 1933 with the Act of Enablement allowing him to come in under the federal state. Of course, Germany is located in the District of Columbia, the Federal Republic of Germany is located on Yuma Street Northwest in Washington DC. We're seeing news now of Angela Merkel screaming that she's being spied on by the NSA. Merkel is clergy for Congress. One of the first clergy for Congress after the war was Dr. Phil Heinz Heinrich. He was a psychiatrist employed to promote and maintain the same eugenics program started by the U.S. Congress. Of course, everybody knows what Planned Parenthood is, right? Planning Parenthood. That's what they've sold to you. Margaret Sanger was a eugenicist. She was targeting the black population. Now all of you white people that just heard that and dismissed it, the majority of abortions are now performed by whites. Not only that, Christian and Catholic, quote, white people. The depopulation program does not discriminate against the human race. Eugenics does not see color, culture, languages, or other forms of descent. Eugenics program is targeting the human race because they are not psychopaths. When you go look into the history of humankind, you will find that at one point, psychiatry is telling you that Cro Magnon and Neanderthal walked this earth. And at some point, Neanderthal lost. Well, the attorney really wants you to believe that. Satan would love it. Would love nothing more. And for you to take up a title or a fiction that calls you something separate from what you really are, whom you really are. Of course, Cro-Magnon Man did not have a frontal lobe. It's a devolved species. Neanderthal has a frontal lobe.
If Cro-Magnon Man wants to impede evolution to maintain its current position, always the upper 3%. Always the upper 3%. It'll tell Neanderthal what to eat, how to behave, how to act, and in this, it will control Neanderthal with something called law, politics. Doctrine after doctrine after doctrine, Neanderthal man will be taught to be something else. It will be taught to be a product of a corporation through the action of civil engineering. cro man will control the inflation rates through a mechanism called the IMF. Cro-Magnon Man will teach the Neanderthal to hate itself and each other through reservation of rights. It'll pit it against itself through use of political uh, tools such as feminism masculism, racism, Zionism, Islamism, Catholicism, Judaism, corporatism, environmentalism. And Cro-Magnon Man will get Neanderthal to produce far and beyond anything anyone could ever imagine. It'll teach it all sorts of things using the Delphi technique, maintaining a new reality called consensus reality. Defined consensus reality is that which is generally agreed to be reality based on a consensus view. You can go to ncbi.nlm dot nih dot gov the US National Library of Medicine National Institutes of Health and find the research guidelines for the Delphi survey technique now, the Delphi technique is it's vastly important for national defense as maintained by the RAND Corporation and the Department of Defense. Snippet of this little abstract here. Quote, consensus methods such as the Delphi survey technique are being employed to help enhance effective decision making in health and social care. The Delphi survey is a group facilitation technique which is an iterative multi-stage process designed to transform opinion into group consensus. It is a flexible approach that is used commonly within the health and social sciences yet little guidance exists to help researchers undertake this method of data collection. What is that? Well, the Delphi survey technique is a lot better than the NSA. It's more efficient than the CIA as it allows you, the participant, to make up your own consensus. This is facilitated because you are not trusting yourself and each other. 
You are reliant on that other daddy, whoever that may be. Maybe it's a community or a school. Maybe it's a state or a country or heck, maybe even a flag or another symbol that you idolize and worship outside of yourself and each other. This is also a requirement of politics. The inception, the inception, of course, is the action of a biogenesis, meaning away from life, mind, and soul. If shock doctrine is applied against you, and in this you lose the self or the ability to trust yourself in each other, nomenclature can be employed. Nomenclature, of course, means to grab something and give it a law or name. You can study this further by reading Genesis. The next step in democratic theory after a biogenesis, which is also known as the doctrine of a Thomas, to name all things down to their smallest iota, is of course clear and present danger doctrine. And in this example, from the book Exodus, which means outside of God, a judge comes down from a hill, points his finger at the masses, and says, you all are killing each other and stealing each other's wives and asses. And within this great retra, relative to the same one that Lycurge has put on, which of course is another fiction, that same judge will come right in, right after, in the action of taxation, or Leviticus, Levy of course always meant tax, and offer to protect you for a fee. At which point this same judge, the same actor, the same fiduciary, or a character of a trust, not a trust, not the action of a trust, the character of a trust will offer you a constitution. Which of course is relative to nomenclature, right? If it describes you, it owns you, according to the lexicons. In this, that psychological construct known as democratic theory, also known as the doctrine of the biogenesis, clear person danger doctrine, the action of taxation in exchange for protection, otherwise known as patriotism or calling something else your father, is also known as Babylonian theory. This means that when you partake of that tree of knowledge, when you participate, when you eat those concepts, num, 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 you're fornicating with that other father. You're fornicating with the Lord God. As it says in 1 Corinthians 6, you can only fornicate with the Lord God by giving it your body. As it says, Fornication is not for anything else but the Lord God. And I've had so many arguments. Well, well, no, we're supposed to give our bodies for the to the Lord God. No. Fornication is fornication. Of 
calling something else your father is, of course, sin. That's another perverted word. Sin in Latin means without. Never meant bad. It means without. You've lost yourself. Going back into the mythological texts, that's the metaphor of lost souls on the river Styx. The river of lost souls. And of course, the construct of the court system, the legal system, and hospital and institutionalized settings stemming from the such as the 1789 Judiciary Act, 1864 Geneva Convention, 1929 Geneva Convention, established banks along the shores of the River Styx. These banks are catching, finding as treasure trove, which is otherwise known as controversy or the action being with that treasure trove and what the attorney or Satan does if you do not know yourself if you do not trust yourself and each other going back to the word me meaning the, the entity or the being that you see with your own eyes instead of what you see in your mind as a psychological construct Jesus was trying to tell you follow me <coughs> excuse me not the ego not the super ego not the id the human in front of you. Maybe it's a child or a homeless person or somebody who's being murdered through a legal process. Perhaps me as a Palestinian in need of your awareness. Or someone who lives on a hill in Israel called Zion. The American mindset is the same as the one that's relative in the original text containing what Corinth was. And of course as we read through the text, we see that the disciples didn't always realize what Jesus was saying because there's so many different constructs of language. Not just of the tongue, not just of the tongue, but those that are psychologically created. For example, the Delphi technique, Delphi survey, has been employed forever to maintain consensus reality of the smallest iota. Uh, domestic violence surveys are only sent out to female-only domestic violence shelters. And for example, the 2009 domestic violence survey. It came out and said one in three, one in four females are victims of domestic violence. That survey was only sent to one, female only domestic violence shelters and two, domestic violence shelters. 
only. So that survey, the answer was actually one in four females at a domestic violence shelter are victims of domestic violence. And when you go into the Department of Justice statistics, 1% of the population, 1% or 800,000 females are victims of domestic violence. And, and 1% or 800,000 males are victims of domestic violence. But attorneys have a really good thing going on here, don't they? If you believe that one in four females are victims of domestic violence and males are the perpetrator, you are going to play into this game in the action of consensus reality. Vilify the male, which is your protector. And we'll come back to that in a minute. And as you vilify this male, you are entering into a civil war. And this is promoted by Congress, the one that's cashing in on the civil war. The attorneys that are cashing in on the civil war. In any other biology, the male protects. The female lion does not bitch or moan about her rate of pay because she doesn't have a federal government offering her benefits and paying her less. The female lion actually is the one that hunts while the male stays home to protect the children. Within the action of the practice of law and politics, the male has been moved away from the protection of females and children. So that attorney, Satan, can prey on men, women, and children. And you can read about this in the 2009 UN report on human trafficking, which actually maintains that females are the main perpetrator of child sexual abuse, female victim sexual abuse, and the male slave labor market. Now, of course, the word female is very, very, very twisted because they're actually referring to the 1% that are psychopathic. Now going back to the Delphi survey that came out with the numbers in 2009 for one in four females are out of domestic violence shelter victims of domestic violence. It was actually done through a series of surveys called the Intimate Partner Violence Surveys. But it's sold to you as spousal abuse. Or the word domestic, meaning of the home, violence. In your mind, you put that together as the male being the perpetrator. We need to go back to the intimate partner part. Because it is not the male. It is the psychopathic female. It is the effeminate male that is missing frontal lobe, preying on humanity in the action of genocide. A Barbara Boxer senator will get up there she will espouse to you that males are the perpetrator. 
Barbara Boxer, of course, it's on the Senate Judiciary Committee. You know that committee that has a separation of powers. And Diane Feinstein will get up there and promote what is known as artificial intelligence regarding domestic violence surveys, consensus reality, Delphi technique, Alinsky method as employed upon the populace through the educational system. Of course, the bottom line is that that is psychological warfare. The promotion of artificial intelligence in any, any way, shape, or form is psychological warfare. It is also known as lawfare. These entities, these twisted, twisted, twisted beings do nothing but prey on humanity for financial gain. Politicians are not corrupt. They, the system of politics, the action of polycratis is a criminal enterprise in itself. You don't want to revamp it. You want to repudiate it. Get rid of it. And of course, Last night I was listening to the Bo and Rocco show, of course, and, and Bo had gone into a lot of the psychological construct. I'm reading excerpts from various sources, and I urge everybody to listen to that archive when it comes out. Um, I didn't see it out a few minutes ago, but it's probably out by now on... Uh, the Revolution Radio face our YouTube channel uh, Talk Revolution Radio and um, this is profound. Now going back to Edward Bernays, he was an Austrian American pioneer in the field of public relations and propaganda, referred to in his obituary as the quote father of public relations end quote. He combined the ideas of Bone and Trotter on crowd psychology. And, and you know, when the, in the research, consensus reality itself, crowd psychology, it lowers the overall IQ by at least 33 points. Just to be in within consensus reality. There's absolutely no analytical thought being employed. No relativity whatsoever. And there are those who get mad at me when I call people animals. You're, you're codified under 7 U.S.C., which is agriculture. You're preserved under the Preservation Act, 16 U.S.C. 7. Article 1, Section 9, Clause 1 and 2, you were called birds, a term. And the action of crowd psychology, the, the non-use of analytical thought, is identical to a crowd of seals barking and clapping or perhaps better example is lemmings following that Pied Piper you can get mad at me all you want it's not going to change your behavior until you change your behavior
Edward Bernays was referred to as in his in his obituary as the quote father of public relations. He combined the ideas of Bohn and Trotter on crowd psychology with the psychoanalytical ideas of his uncle Sigmund Freud. Freud, of course, told you that you hate your fathers, you lost after your mothers, all of these ideologies. And in this, he was teaching you to hate each other, to be separate, segregated, secular in your thought, emotions and actions. This is a requirement of farming, human husbandry. And for those offended that I refer to you as animals, Congress started a farm called a colony, which is a synonym for farm. You, you are living on a farm. You, you're patronizing. Now get this. A house called the House of Representatives. You're living and residing in a house called the House of Representatives, which is an imaginary thing. It's a concept. You've been taught that you are so special. And you can prove to me that you are special because you got an A here and you have stickers there and you have all of these awards and trinkets handed to you by your, quote, employers. And you earned this right to be and that right to be and you can evidence this by a documentary record. But nowhere can you evidence to me that you are actually being in a relative state. Everyone can evidence to me that they're a fiction, that they claim to be a fiction. I'm a male, I'm a female. I have my rights. Those are fictions. That is the action of nomenclature within Babylonian theory. I'm a Christian. That is Babylonian theory. I'm a Catholic. That is Babylonian theory. You are a state of being, relative state of being. Time is even a construct in this grand design. You do not live in time zones. I can call the UK right now and I will get somebody on the other end because they're in the same time that I am in. Otherwise I would have to wait five hours. Time zones are of course social, political, and commercial constructs. They are concepts. sold to you by the same law merchant that has been farming you in the action of human husbandry since the inception of politics. Democratic theory, constitutional theory, communist theory. This isn't something new. This happens every 300 years. Every 300 years, they have enough overhead that they off humanity and call the population down to a controllable number. Cro-Magnon man cannot afford financially to evolve
if Cro-Magnon man did not stop or impede the evolution of itself, and coal Neanderthal, it would be Neanderthal within only a couple more generations. It would have died out already had you not have started to participate and partake of the tree of knowledge, all of these concepts and ideologies. Ideology is a thought of a thought. A fourth generation warfare is defined as a conflict characterized by blurring of the lines between war and politics, combatants and civilians. Low intensity conflict, LIC, is the use of military forces. Now keep that word in the back of your mind. Applied selectively and with restraint to enforce compliance with the policies or objectives of the political body controlling the military force. You see the Army, you see the Navy, you see the Marines, you see the Air Force. What about Stasi? What about Stasi agents? CPS, IRS, adult protection, social services, Stasi from Wikipedia, the Ministry for State Security, commonly known as the Stasi, was, was, I like that past tense reference there, the official state security service of the German Democratic Republic, or GDR. If you go to Dun & Bradstreet, German Democratic Republic, 1964, was located at 4943 Massachusetts Avenue Northwest in Washington, D.C. This residence now is up for sale on Trulia. It's just another corporation maintained by Congress. Always has been. It's all wrapped up pretty and nice in the action of psychological warfare. When we get back from Barry Call, we're going to uh, the fourth meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers, Moscow, March 10th to April 24th, 1947, that kicked off the German Marshall Fund of the United States, which of course is located at 1744. R Street Northwest in Washington, D.C., 2000, It's imperative that you realize the action of peace packs is eugenics program. The Marshall Plan, of course, it's called officially the European Recovery Program, or ERP. Marshall was the Secretary of State at that time. Marshall is now known, of course, such as John Forbes Carey, the Clearinghouse. The Marshall Plan was the American initiative to aid Europe in which the United States gave 13 billion in economic support to help rebuild European economies after the end of World War II. The 
you could read about how this is implicated from inception to extension in the PILGP documents um, post-conflicts post-conflict constitutional drafters handbook of course Congress implicates a war against a popular such as Syria or the Ukraine and then comes right in to offer a declaration of independence and then on top of that constitutional theory of course independent means they're putting you into a pending state saying oh they don't know themselves we don't know if they're dead or alive we need to save them pick them up as Trover within the action of controversy of course this is how you find yourself within the legal process an adversary defined as Satan Satan defined of course means adversary or one who plots against another so the attorney aka Satan comes in and grabs you as treasure trove and begins to cash in on these things that's its function that's how it discharges congressional bankruptcy it's how it makes its money that's how it raises you your community your family your homes your mothers your fathers aunts and uncles brothers and sisters and of course after the break we'll talk about Ukraine Ukraine is located according to Dun & Bradstreet at 71776 that's 1776 I Street Northwest Suite 575 Washington DC 1701 K Street Northwest Suite 903 Washington DC and of course of course Ukraine is also known as you said or the United States Agency for International Development created by John F. Kennedy in 1961 by executive order and this all stems all the way back to Wilson the 1918 conclusion of peace at Brest the peace treaty of Brest the Litvosk in 1918 and the saddest part of all of this is that in the Gelnhausen Charter it says you guys are going to forget what I just said in just a moment of time it's painful to hear you don't want to know these things you don't want to remember you don't want to do anything because it's easier to fall back on the easier to believe truth that's proposed to you by ABC the American Broadcasting Corporation the CBS the corporate broadcasting service and in other countries the BBG and we'll be back after the break folks stick around uh, we are also supported over on TammyPepperman.org as we are heard now on No Borders Radio and of course, if you'd like to donate, please do so to our web hosting service, which has donated so much time, energy, and effort to not only keeping us on the air, but also keeping us on the web. And we thank you for your continued support. And before the break, we were talking about the Ukraine and all of this related It's just horrifying to me, and I pray uh, 
I pray that you hear me. The United States Congress is slaughtering human beings all across the globe. And it puts on these shows throughout the mainstream media, which is controlled entirely by the Broadcasting Board of Governors internationally. And you can find this on their site at bbg.gov. They don't hide anything. John Forbes Carey, of course, the Secretary of State, otherwise known as the Clearinghouse, is one of the members of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Of course, you could follow that all the way through to the Council on Foreign Relations, which, of course, is made up of a membership of corporate interests. The conservators of this bankruptcy that Congress declared in 1933 are known as the Association of Corporate Counsel. These are the same folks that went after such as Babyface Nelson. Babyface Nelson was considered a mobster and a bank robber and an overall bad guy. He was a victim of the child trafficking schematic that stemmed from Omaha, Nebraska, Boys Town International now as it is known. The folks patronizing children at that time were such as Wilson, Hoover, Roosevelt, Winston Churchill, Kissinger gets off on human trafficking, Joseph Biden gets off on genocide and human trafficking, Patrick Leahy gets off on genocide and human trafficking, child trafficking as evidenced by their own works. Crimes Against Children Act is a privacy law to protect congressional pedophiles. It's, uh, Senator Farnham from Illinois, he is not a rarity. He is the norm. They picked him to be the fall guy because he's terminal. He's going to die anyway, real soon. Patrick Leahy, Joseph Biden, John Cornyn, Barbara Boxer, Diane Feinstein, Orrin Hatch. These are pedophiles. Predators of children. Guardian ad litems. These are predators of children. These are not protectors. These folks traffic your children through the legal process. These folks are betting on the productive value of children and females and males by court process, banking, and you're still patronizing it. Of course, on the CNN headlines, Born Air erupts at news briefing. GOP will sue Obama for this. For what? There is nothing worse than the slaughter of human beings.
Offending an eagle is not harm upon a human being. Rolling through a stop sign is not harm on a human being. Commercial crimes are those that are defined against the laws of revenue. Rape is considered a commercial crime because Congress says it's the only entity that is allowed to rape you and profit from it. Congress says that it and its judges and attorneys are the only entity that is allowed to kidnap you and profit from it. And the evidence of this is in 27 CFR Code of Federal Regulations 72.11. Commercial crimes are defined as those against the laws of revenue. This would be equivalent to Charles Manson writing on a piece of paper that if others killed Sharon, State, Sharon Tate and her unborn child, they would be charged for this because he's the only one that's able to do that. There is something wrong and absolutely perverted with the mindset that you are carrying with you. These concepts that you're taking up. They've said recently that they're doping you up with lithium in your water. Start filtering your water. Go to the Codex Alimentarius and find out what's in your food. Everything is written. Clean Hands Doctrine says that it has to be. They're allowing you, due to ignorance, to commit suicide perpetually. It says on all the food labels, this might kill you. Prescription labels, prescription inserts, this will kill you. If you take it, that's up to you. That's clean hands. Imitrex says it will give you tuberculosis in exchange for getting rid of your headache. If you take it, it's not their fault for giving you tuberculosis. All other prescription medications says it will kill you. You believe it's safe because it doesn't say when. In a recent report, 46 human beings in the United States Incorporated alone are dying each day, every day, of prescription drug overdose. Within the last three days in Israel, along the Gaza Strip, 90 human beings have been slaughtered by the same Congress. This is sick. You're patronizing it and calling it your father. You, you are saying that you live in the House of Representatives if you are maintaining as a citizen of this thing. That's disgusting. Something's wrong here. And because it's a predator, and it's not going to stop if you would ask it nicely to stop, What are you thinking? What are you thinking? You are not stopping the patriotism. You are continuing this and making sure that it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. For what? 
I want my benefits. What's the downfall to that? Okay, I've been watching this on, on such as Facebook. My food stamp balance just went down. I'm not getting as many food stamps now. Uh, they took some of my cash assistance, and I don't qualify for this thing or this thing or this thing or this thing. They're killing you. Through the action of hearts and minds, or winning hearts and minds, they're giving you a very small benefit in exchange for the opportunity to kill you. Murder. For what? A flag? A culture? A language? You're patronizing language? If they don't speak English, I don't want them around me. Hello? English is Latin. It's Roman. It's also stuck together with Greek, and you have no idea, no idea, absolutely no idea what you are speaking. But you patronize it. And you take it up as your own. Contrary to the rules handed out to you in 1 Corinthians 13. Now, all of these things, all of these constructs, these psychological weapons used against you, language and lawfare, cultural design, civil engineering, It is maintaining you as a product and a corporation. If you say or speak, I'm an American, that is the same thing as Barbie having a Mattel stamp or brand on her butt. It's the same as one of those Cabbage Patch dolls with the little sewn on autograph on the butt. You are worshipping. You are worshipping something that is so absolutely perverted and disgusting and horrifying. For what? For what? The, the right and benefit to live as a farm animal on a farm? And you're offended when I speak these things. I'm going back to fourth generation warfare. The elements of fourth generation warfare. Fourth generation warfare is defined as conflicts which involve the following elements. They are complex and long term. Uh, in 1776, we got a Declaration of Independence, and then there was an Articles of Confederation, or perhaps the Constitution came before the Articles of Confederation, and the 1941 Atlantic Charter, and the 1620s uh, Charter of West Virginia, and Second Charter, and Third Charters, and Fifth Charters, and the United Nations Charter, and all of these different formulations of banks. Those are bank charters. Treaties are agreements between two banks. Fourth generation warfare is defined as conflicts which involve the following elements. They are complex and long term. Yes, it's been a while that Congress has been educating you through the public education system. Same Hitler youth as it ever was. Second element is terrorism as a tactic. Weapons of mass destruction. 
Somebody just took down the World Trade Center. It wasn't me. In your supposed your public education system, this thing, this terroristic cell, this domestic terror cell called Congress and its minions are entering into quote your children's schools and terrorizing your children with terror drills teaching them that you are not the authority but that the state is that is exactly identical to what Hitler did in Nazi Germany and the children did what they were made informants and just after they were made informants informing on their families which had an end result of death those very children were made refugees and saved by the same corporation that slaughtered their moms and dads the third element a non-national or transnational base highly decentralized de centralized DE means of Congress has had global governance since 1941 with the Atlantic Charter for a direct attack on the enemy's culture including genocidal acts against civilians Congress made sure that in this neighborhood there's Czechoslovakians and in this neighborhood there's Polish people and in this neighborhood there's Germans and in this neighborhood there's blacks and in this neighborhood there's African Americans and in this neighborhood you're gonna have French and if you don't get it yet you live in Babel Number five, highly sophisticated psychological warfare, especially through media manipulation and lawfare. The Broadcasting Board of Governors has full international control of all civil media. The House of Delegates, the lower chambers of the House of Representatives, has full control of the American Bar Association. From a relative stance, again we're going back to the physics of a thing, there is a bar standard of living. You set the bar. If Barabbas is killing your children and you remove it, that's the bar. If Barabbas is killing your children and Barabbas charges Barabbas for killing your children and cashes in on the deaths of your children, that's the bar. Number six. All available pressures are used. Political. Congress. Economic. Congress. Social. Congress. And military. Congress. 1947 National Security Act says that human beings are the enemy of the state. Fourteenth Amendment says that human beings are the enemy of the state. 
it says a person. That is defined as a corporation. The 14th Amendment has rights reserved over that of a human being. A, quote, citizen, whom, of course, would otherwise live inside of the corporate structure. Number seven. This occurs in low-intensity conflict involving actors from all networks. Social services, child protective services, adult protection, internal revenue service, friend of the court, which is not your friend, it's friend of the court, also known as the IRS. For eight, non combatants are tactical dilemmas. If you do not play into the game, one of their actors is going to prompt you to. If you are not paying taxes, CPS is going to show up at your door. Adult protection is going to show up at your door. One of you in a partnership it's going to be offered greener pastures by an agent. My controversy can be created through family and probate court. Number nine, lack of hierarchy. It looks, I mean, we, we just, uh, a few weeks ago or a month or so ago, we came across a story in Indiana where um, capital wasn't being paid out to Judas and everybody was blaming everybody else while the judges were cashing in. You can go all the way back to quote the history of Sparta and find the same e-force, the overseers, the magistrates as are sitting right now in the Federal Judges Judicial Magistrates Association. Same schematic, same banking. It's always been the same Rome, same Sparta, same concept, same design. Throughout time, game theory says it gets more efficient. The goal is, of course, as in all things, Occam's razor. The most efficient form, the simplest form of something. Number 10, small in size, spread out network of communication and financial support. The most blaring example, of course, is, is the National Organization of Women. Now. That thing has been loaded with psychopaths, female psychopaths, forever. Speaking on the behalf of all, quote, females on this planet. Through the voice of Diane Feinstein, who sits on the Senate Intelligence Committee. Or Barbara Boxer, that sits on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Joseph Biden, this says he speaks on behalf of females. Obama, this says he's a feminist. Now, through the actions of hearts and minds, Obama came in on his platform and says he wanted to fight for fair pay for females. And at that time, he says, females don't get paid as much as males. Okay. Who are we talking about, and what form of employment are we speaking of? Well, in this State of the Union address, the so very last one that Obama maintained. He said females are still not getting paid as much as males. 
who are on federal employ. <gasps> what? Yeah, Congress is not only racist, Congress is sexist. Congress, Congress, Congress is a eugenics program as described in the Articles of Confederation. Article 1. The style, S-T-I-L-E, is a chain of events. The style of this confederacy shall be known as, quote, the United States of America. That means that all of my actions are going to be called the United States of America. It was never a location. It was a, quote, geographical state. Geo means earth and graph means to write So somebody wrote about it and showed you a map. Did it locate it? No. Did it create it out of thin air? Only if you believe it. It's defined in Black's Law Dictionary as an agency by estoppel. Something created in the minds of a third party. So in your mind, you have this physical location and you worship this flag and you stand underneath these pirates and sign the same contracts on the high seas in the uh, 1924 uh, covenant of the League of Nations as they did when they formulated the United Nations Bank with the United Nations Charter. These are the same folks in perpetual union with each other. It's a eugenics pogrom and they got you to worship it. Not only that, they're, they, 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 they've been allowed through this patriotism to slaughter you and your loved ones moment by moment and, and not only in your face in Israel and Syria and Iraq and Afghanistan and um, right now in Africa Greece Canada United States Incorporated Australia which is another corporation in the District of Columbia They've been selling you so many concepts and you've been buying them and eating of that tree of knowledge for far, far, far too long now. Far too long. This is ridiculous. It's absolutely horrifying what's happened. Absolutely horrifying. When does it end? When do you begin? To realize that you are the authority, the author of the book, and that in description, description of writing, that means you're in the book of the dead. The book of life is, is of course, being. I've gone on long enough. Um, you know, the, the uh, Germany and the Ukraine and all of these constructs, they were created by peace treaties, pacts which, with each other, P-A-C-T-S, pacts, stemming from the word pacts, P-A-X. I urge everybody to go to avalon.yale.edu. Oh, avalon Might help if I had my glasses on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Avalon.law.yale.edu. Fourth meeting of the Council of Foreign Ministers, Moscow, March 10th to April 24th, 1947. Report by Secretary Marshall, April 28th, 1947. Quote, tonight I hope to make clearly understandable, understand, the fundamental nature of the issues discussed at the Moscow Conference of Foreign Ministers. The conference dealt with the very heart of the peace for which we are struggling. Of course, this goes on to different variant forms of productivity, 
maintained by agreement. Now remember, this is the Secretary of State, Secretary Marshall, which is a clearinghouse to clear the books on congressional bankruptcy. Uh, Congress declared bankruptcy in 1933. At the same moment in time, all of the attorneys came in under the Emergency Banking Act and said with an oath that they're not part of the discharging. They said in 12 USC, which is the banking codification, 12 USC subsection 73, that the attorneys were not hypothecated, but their clients are. And of course, we're speaking of later to uh, maintain cognitive judgment. Every time you hire an attorney or you participate, the judgment is solidified by the attorney's appearance. It's not solidified by an order. The judgment against you is maintained at the initial appearance of that attorney. You bought into it. And that's the price you are paying. Of course, this schematic is very fine-tuned. In 1832, with the Nullification Proclamation, Andrew Jackson came in and said, you know what, we're, we're going to sweep all of the evidence off the record. And um, if you attempt to argue statute of legislation, you're going to be held in contempt of court, as if for a contempt. The word usage is very important. So everybody who's still appealing their decisions and court orders after they gave the court jurisdiction over their bodies and fornicated, it doesn't do anything. You're just ha being held in contempt. You might win here and there, little stripping here and there, but you're going to lose everything else. I finally won my judgment after 17 years. Okay, what did you lose in between there? Well, my first house I lost, but then I bought another one, and then I ended up declaring bankruptcy, and I lost all my cars, but that had to have been my wife, because she was taking me through divorce at the same time. No, it's all the same business schematic. You see your wife. You see what they want you to see, but on the back end, it's only the attorneys that are cashing in. It's only Satan, Job. When your house burns down, Satan cashes in, Job. When your whole family is slaughtered in various ways, one car accidents, cancer, surprise death, you went into the hospital and never came out. The attorney cashes in. The attorney sitting on the board of trustees at that hospital. It's a place of storing prisoners of war, according to the 1864 Geneva Convention. You're up for grabs if you go into that place. Your baby's up for grabs if you go into that place and have a baby there. It's a legal name. You're not realizing of who you are. You're you're lost on the on the uh, river of lost souls. That river sticks. Come on, they're being nice and saving you. That's what it says in Black's Law Dictionary. It says the court process is called negotiorum gestio. The attorney's called a nice guy. The negotiorum gestor. One who enters without invitation or authority to take over your state for you. They're just nice. They're, they're really nice. You know, I've saw I've seen a lot of nice attorneys. There's one in um, uh, Chicago, Jeffrey Laving. He pretends to be father's rights, but that's a nice gimmick. It's a commercial appeal. I have evidence that he's a pedophile. The founder of Fathers and Families is a pedophile. I have evidence that they're absolutely racist.
children, especially off-color children, are egregiously harmed by these corporations in order to discharge congressional bankruptcy. These are babies being tricked out by guardian ad litems and psychiatrists, which is the same action that they was they were facilitating in Nazi Germany. Of course, we go back to Dun & Bradstreet. Nazi Germany is located in Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. It's a corporation. So all of those human beings that were slaughtered and injured or brought into law were being used as farm animals. Stock. 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 Again, I know you don't want to hear this. I didn't want to hear it either. I wanted to close my eyes and I wanted to bury my head in the sand. I wanted to do anything else, be anywhere else than right here years ago because it's so much. At one time, you know, we, we were looking for aliens. No, it can't be another being walking on this earth. It has to be something else. It's got to be something else. This is disgusting. And then you realize, such as Patrick Leahy, is a vicious, vicious monster. Joseph Biden is a smooth-talking, vicious monster. And Obama is a vicious monster. John Cornyn and Barbara Boxer and Dianne Feinstein. Dianne Feinstein is one of the worst. You could dress her up in a red suit and horns, and it still wouldn't compare to what she's done. They look real pretty. They're supposed to look real pretty. Psychological warfare. If they look like toads, you'd be avoiding them. If they were labeled poisonous, you wouldn't go near them and wouldn't hire them as your attorney. You wouldn't patronize them as your father figure. If they were dressed up as jestors, you sure as heck wouldn't pay them $300 an hour to represent you. It has to be fourth generation warfare. Otherwise you catch on and figure out who's behind the curtain. Another good read, of course, is the actions of uh, Wilson right on up to uh, Roosevelt, uh, Foreign Relations of the United States. You can find this again at avalon.law.yale.edu, 20th century, forward slash B-R-E-S-T dot A-S-P, Foreign Relations of the United States, 1918, the conclusion of peace at Brest. Uh, the top Vixk, sorry, I always ruin Russian, my tongue doesn't work. It's a peace treaty. Article 1, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Turkey for one part, and Russia for the other part, declare that the state of war between them has ceased. 1918. They are resolved to live henceforth in peace and amity with one another. And of course, this goes all the way back to the 1794 uh, Treaty of Amity, Commerce, and Navigation. This is before the Postal Union. It doesn't matter about the Postal Union. That was another gimmick. This established the ability to post you. And amity and peace, packed with each other to trick you out. Human beings, as your pimps. Because this is what they do. This is the boogeyman hiding in your closet. This is the boogeyman under your bed. And it whispers to you, we're not the boogeyman. You are. Be scared of each other. Avoid each other. 
Now, the restructuring of Rome, of course, stemmed from the Treaty of Westphalia, peace treaty between the Holy Roman Empire and the King of France and their respective allies. And this again goes back to Australia, Austria, Germany, United States, all of the Roman Empire and their respective allies. That's, of course, 1648. After Rome had already formulated its banks in the United States Incorporated, called it the Charter of West Virginia, Virginia, Charter of New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Commonwealth. These things are all Rome. Still, never changed never altered course it just put on a new mask so it looked nicer pretty another um, story down Bloomberg I thought was quite humorous Merkel is talking about Angela Merkel again uh, Bloomberg.com, Germany expels U.S. intelligence envoy amid spying spat. Angela Merkel is clergy for Congress. And this is exactly identical to what Dianne Feinstein was doing when she said, Oh, the NSA is spying on Congress. Dianne Feinstein is the chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee. She's the one that directs the NSA, and all other forms of national security, including the CIA. Big surprise. You'll find that the Bundy Ranch fiasco was the same thing. BLM, Bureau of Land Management, is another federal arm of the same federal government put on a really good show though trying to teach you that you know that part of Congress is a bad guy and that part of Congress is a good guy and we're waiting on good Congress to show up and maybe we're waiting on oh yeah Jesus maybe we should wait on a savior to come save us rather than you know being and, and stopping the patriotism of this abhorrent abhorrent thing called Congress it's absolutely disgusting absolutely there, there's nothing that it that, that it won't do against humankind it has perpetrated the most horrifying things Saddam Hussein did not want to be part of the Federal Reserve System it did not he did not want to be part of the International Monetary Fund so what happened the clergy for Congress said whoa there's weapons of mass destruction and it hung him in front of your very eyes And you cheered. You allowed him to be crucified. Just like it says in Matthew 27. Saddam Hussein, Jesus was delivered up by Judas. Who else? Who's next? Right now, Congress is raising Palestine. Congress is raising Syria. Congress is raising everywhere. 250,000. 250,000. That's a quarter of a million human beings, human children. In the United States Incorporated alone are being sexually abused right this moment in time by politics by politicians 
by judges and attorneys, psychiatrists, and doctors that get off and make benefit by what they're doing to your children. They're cashing in on the destruction of humankind. These things are, are, are just unbelievable that they can be tolerated for so very long. And part of that is the psychological construct. Now going back to the use of the Delphi survey, years ago I came across this one and it, it always stuck with me. And you can find this one at uh, www.awol-texas.org. It's from the CIA presentation called All Walks of Life. Delphi Survey Summary. And it starts out, quote, Disabled women rate caregiver abuse and domestic violence as number one issue. Quote, Violence and abuse issues were rated the number one priority by women with disabilities on both rounds of a national Delphi survey conducted by Berkeley Planning Association, BPA, a small employee-owned company, operated and managed principally by women, including women with disabilities. The Delphi survey was conducted during 1995 through 1996 to seek input from women with disabilities about the importance, importance of various research and policy issues as one of BPA's activities under a federal government grant entitled Meeting the Needs of Women with Disabilities, a Blueprint for Change. The Delphi survey was distributed to over 200 knowledgeable women with disabilities around the country. About 100 women, 104, responded. The women were of all ages and lived in all areas of the country. California had the highest number of respondents. Respondents ranked abuse and violence as the most important research topic. So what's the question? Were you abused? No, that was not the question. The question was, what's most important to you? So the results of these surveys are always in line with what the survey taker wants to represent to the human populace. Respondents ranked girls or sorry, respondents ranked abuse and violence as the most important research topic, followed by reproductive health programs for girls with disabilities, and substance abuse. They identify two key information needs that need to be addressed. One, developing and disseminating materials for women with disabilities and service providers about caretaker abuse. Hold on, that's talking about research regarding caretaker abuse. It doesn't refer to women with disabilities being abused by caretakers. But the perception that stems from these perverted, twisted things is perverted and twisted. This is consensus reality. It's setting the stage to sell to you that there is domestic violence within the uh, this sect of humanity. This is how they encapsulate you or... Um, uh, thwart you uh, through the action of psychological warfare. Now if you want to learn more about the use of Delphi, there's a good one from onlinelibrary.wiley.com which is a very reputable source of course for all things scientific, uh, if, if science is reputable. Because it, 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 it's maintained by the grasping motion. Science is not relativity. It's grasping knowledge from various sources. This one's entitled Components for Substance Abuse Counselor Education Curriculum, a Delphi Study.
I'll read a small amount. The number of substance abuse treatment centers has escalated substantially. Miranda 1987 reported that alcohol treatment has expanded into a multi-million dollar business while Peel 1989 has maintained that the treatment of addiction has gotten out of control. This has placed an increasing demand for qualified substance abuse counselors Along with this increased demand comes the questions of who is qualified to become a substance abuse counselor and what should the curriculum for the substance abuse counselor be and who should do the training. These questions have been raised in the past and continue to be a debated concern. For example, Armstrong, Bowen, and Whale in 1978 looked at competency training. Scrooge, 1980, and Gideon, Little, and Martin in 1980 raised questions concerning the training components of the substance abuse counselor. Also, the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism and IAAA 1985 studied the characteristics of drug abuse counselors in relationship to the results of their work. Every state has a system for certifying substance abuse counselors and procedures for determining the educational and experiential qualifications of the substance abuse counselor. One state, Texas, has developed the licensure for chemical dependency counselor, or LCDC. Arneson, Rubin, and Hussein, 1984, reported in his field study that the credentialing of drug abuse counselors has been an increasing priority in state substance abuse programs. Now, all of these gimmicks, you know, we're talking about the necessity of drug and abuse counselors. But wait a second, what, first of all, what is the core foundation of drug and alcohol abuse? What, what creates it? And it's created by the same attorneys who own the medical psychological and legal industries centers for disease control and prevention recently uh, July of 2013 quote prescription painkiller overdose is a growing epidemic especially among women 48,000 nearly 48,000 women died of prescription painkiller overdoses between 1999 and 2010 now this has increased this year alone they said that 42 females per day per day are dying of prescription drug overdose now through television programming and through their very own doctors what, what what is this? Who's creating these addictions? Who's handing these pills out like candy? Who's first of all who's funding these doctors? Who's bribing these doctors? And we've got lot loads and loads and loads of evidence from GSK and Merck and all of these other pharmaceutical industries, the FDA itself promoting this genocide. The FDA is saying, oh, they're harmless to whatever and, and uh, if they uh, promote this and include an insert that says it kills you then that's okay it's really not them murdering you it's something else outside of your scope or or outside of your relative state and therefore they can't be held accountable according to clean hands doctrine we'll be back on saturday folks don't miss the public law with bo and tammy tomorrow night right here on tammypepperman.org be well everybody